Hello guys and welcome back to another video tutorial series on system design. And today's concept is consistent hashing. In our previous video tutorial series on system design, we have discussed in detail some of the key concept of distributed system, such as load balancing, where we have discussed in detail that what is a load balancing, why we need a load balancer in our system, and where should we place a load balancer in a distributed system. And in our last video tutorial series, we have discussed in detail that what is a caching and how should we implement a caching mechanism in our distributed system so that we can easily retrieve data from our system. So if you have not gone through that video till yet, I would highly recommend you to go through that video first and come back to this video so that it will be easy for you to understand the flow of execution. Also on that video, we have discussed what are the different type of caching system that we can incorporate in our large scale distributed system so that we can increase the performance of the system. And today in this video, we will discuss in detail that how we should store the data in a distributed caching system so that it will be easy to fetch the data in the future. So the general mechanism of storing the data in a distributed system is by using a virtual hash table where each data with the request ID is mapped with the corresponding data server where the data is present so that it will be easy for us to retrieve that corresponding data in the future. So the general mechanism by which we create a mapping between the data and the server is by using a normal hashing technique where each data having some request ID is being hashed through a function which gives a corresponding hashing value. So over here, let's assume that 1100 is the corresponding request ID for a particular data. And while storing the data in our distributed caching server, we pass this value through a hashing mechanism, which returns a value. So over here, if you see the calculation, the cache number, that is the location at which the data will reside, is determined by the value of key module n, where n denotes the number of cache in the distributed system, and the key denotes the random request ID of the data. So over here, the number 1100 is moduled by 4, since the number of cache over here is 4 and thus the number that is generated from this hashing function is 0, means the data with the request number as 1100 will reside on the cache number 0. Thus, in this way, we create a mapping sheet between the data request along with the caching server where it is located. But there is a problem by using a normal hashing technique. If for example, if one of the caching server is down for some time or it got corrupted for some reason, then all of the data that are present on that caching server will get lost. And thus the normal hashing technique will also not work over there. Because right now, if we pass the data ID 1100 through the hashing function, the corresponding mapping server is 2, whereas the actual data lies on the server 0. Since the number of cache server on this distributed system got changed because one of the server is not working right now. So this entire mechanism will fail if there is any problem with any of the caching server. So we have to find out a general mechanism where it will be easy for us to manipulate the data and store the data in case of any failure on the cache server. And that is why we use the mechanism which is known as the consistent hashing. So if you like this video so far, please do like and share this video. And if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. And if you would like to connect with me on social media, feel free to connect with me. I will be providing all my social media handles in the description below. So our consistent hashing is a strategy of distributing the data and the request into multiple server or cache server. So that in case of the failure of any of the server in a cluster, we have to perform some minimal reorganization over the system to overcome that corresponding changes. So let's understand that what is a consistent hashing with the help of a visual diagram. So in case of a consistent hashing, we consider a data structure like a conceptual ring of hashes, where this conceptual ring of hashes are divided or broken down into multiple segments of number, where each number denotes a location of a server or a request mapping. And based on this mechanism of consistent hashing, we place our server within this conceptual ring of hashes. 
Let's assume for this case, in this example, based on the server IP address, we are placing this three server on this corresponding location of this ring. And all the requests that are present on this zone that is in between A and B will be served by the servers B. Whereas all the requests that lies on the segment between B and C will be served by the respective server that is C. Similarly over here all the requests that are coming on this zone will be served by the server that is A. So with this consistent hashing concept, whenever a request comes to our distributed system, we pass that corresponding request number through our hashing mechanism. And thus our hashing function will generate a corresponding value for that respective request. And based on that value, we will place the request accordingly. So over here you can see that all the requests that lies on this region will be served by server number P. Means in case of caching, all the requests that lies on this region will be stored in the cache server B. Similarly, all the data having the cache server lies on this region will be stored in the cache server C. So with this approach of consistent hashing, we have simplified our job of removing and adding a server within our distributed system. And also we have managed to distribute our load uniformly across different servers. So for example, at any point of time, we are introducing a new server in between server A and C. Thus, with this approach, we do not have to change a lot of hashing mechanism, rather we have to change a small part of request that lies between the server C and T. And thus, all the other requests and the server will work as it is without any problem. So over here you have understand that what is a consistent hashing and how internally it helps to distribute the traffic uniformly across different servers. So now let's understand theoretically that what is a consistent hashing. So a consistent hashing is a special hashing strategy for a distributed system by which any key or data are distributed across multiple server or cache. And with the help of this consistent hashing, we normally minimize the reorganization effort of adding and removing of a server from our distributed system. So now since we have understand that what is a consistent hashing and how it normally behaves internally within a distributed system, now we have to understand that where should we use a consistent hashing. So whenever we have a cluster of server and we need to distribute the traffic uniformly across server, there we use the concept of consistent hashing. This is the reason why we were discussing about the concept of load balancing in our previous video. There we were discussing about the concept of consistent hashing. Because a load balancer uses the algorithm of consistent hashing to distribute the traffic uniformly across different servers. So hopefully you guys are clear with the concept of what is a consistent hashing and how should we implement the concept of consistent hashing for distributing the load in a large scale distributed system. So in our next video tutorial series, we will discuss in detail the main concept of database where we will study in detail that what are the different type of database available for our distributed system. And also we will discuss in detail that why we need a NoSQL server rather than an SQL server in a distributed system. And also we will see the different use cases for different database such as normal Oracle database or some of the NoSQL database like Cassandra. So see you on the next video tutorial series on system design where we will discuss about the database server. So if you like this video so far, please do like and share this video. And if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. So see you on the next video. Thank you.